Tom Fanning, Chairman, President, CEO at Southern Company, joining me at the Aspen Ideas Festival. Great to talk to you here. Rhonda, great to be with you again. We must start with the economy. You uh, run a big company. There's some worries that economic growth is slowing. You didn't see that in your last quarterly earnings report. Do you see any slowdown at all? Yeah, it, it, it's fascinating. Uh, the Southeast has generally been better than the rest of the United States for a number of reasons. Number one, it's a business-friendly climate. Companies are actually moving to the Southeast. We have seen a very interesting trend, though. Uh, as with the Federal Reserve's prediction of economic growth, where they're projecting 3% or more, we have too, but the mix of growth has been different. In the past, past probably two years or so, big industrial growth, but kind of flattish growth in terms of uh, residential consumption and commercial. There would be office buildings, schools, stuff like that. Just this last quarter, however, we've seen a little bit of a slowdown with the industrial growth. We think that's currency related and export related and a little bit of low oil price related. But now we're starting to see some pickup. It gives us some hope on consumption in the residential sector. So that's a very promising kind of green shoot, if you will. You are on the board of the Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta. So of course, everyone is playing this guessing game as to whether the Fed is going to move in September. Do you have any thoughts on whether we're in a situation here where the economy perhaps will slow down? We have Europe to worry about Oh, sure. Now. Yeah, listen. So I'm the chairman of the board, and I'm on the executive committee of the conference of chairs at the Big Fed. And we actually talk about this stuff all the time. Now, I certainly don't have a vote, so this is my opinion, not theirs. But I liken the, the Fed's decision to kind of dividend policy in the corporate sense. That is, the decision on raising the federal funds rate is not so much about the past, not even about the present. It's really built on expectations theory and finance in the future. So the real decision here is not so much when liftoff will occur but what will be the regular predictable and sustainable track of increases so the thing i like to think about is what do they want the fed funds rate to be say in the year 2017 and 18 and 19. so we'll see there's a lot of speculation i think the market guess right now is still september 25 basis points but that's what the market's saying. Does it change the way you approach business at all in terms of your own plans? Are you factoring that in at all? Well, you asked the right question actually a question ago, and it was with Europe's malaise going on, with event risk around Greece, and potentially event risk around Russia and the Middle East, and lack of transparency in China, and what else is going on in the world. The real issue is volatility, uncertainty in financial markets has a real economic cost to business. And so long as that volatility is out there, businesses are less likely to commit to long-term capital expenditures. So when the Fed starts its trajectory, we want to have something regular, predictable, sustainable, businesses can bet on. But at the same time, the Fed is making that decision with all this worldwide uncertainty. Certainly, the United States is not in a silo. And we've got to understand this worldwide economy is something we're all going to have to deal with. At the same time now, at least, you are pushing ahead with all sorts of things. You just acquired yeah, a solar are. farm yeah. in Georgia. So yeah. what is next for you kind of on the acquisition trail, if you will? Sure. Uh, so uh, we are in a position now where Southern Company is the only company in America building all of the above. Everybody talks about that as kind of a catchphrase. We're leading the renaissance of nuclear in America, and we're kind of wrapping that project up. The units will begin in service in the end of 19 and 20. So kind of on the back end of that, it's been over a 10-year effort. Building a clean coal plant, and people say there's no such thing, this plant will have a carbon footprint less than natural gas. We're moving ahead on that. Uh, renewables. Uh, we are one of the largest owners of solar photovoltaics in America. I've not been a big fan of thermal solar because I think one of the bigger environmental issues of the future is actually water. I think air is in pretty good shape and we'll continue to work on that, but water issues are a big deal. I've never been that big a fan of wind from southern standpoint because we don't have the climate that supports big wind flows. Um, so you will continue to see us invest in solar We've just started investing in wind a little bit. Uh, and I think there's lots for us to do here going forward. We're actually very bullish about our prospects. I've talked about that in some earnings calls. So you must spend a lot of time thinking, uh, a lot of time thinking about cyber terrorism, given your uh, portfolio. Oh, sure. Listen, and I chair for the United States of America under uh, the aegis of the Department of Homeland Security, something called the ESCC, Homeland Security. Uh, segmented American commerce into 16 pieces, 
Electricity is one, so I chair that group. And we are responsible for organizing our industry to prepare for and ultimately respond to any event that relates to cyber terrorism, physical terrorism, and natural disasters. And in fact, it's a very important project. The CEOs of our industry are exceedingly well united. We have a great partnership with the federal government, and it's working pretty well. What we've got to do uh, is to align technology, systems, and information sharing regimes. And we, we work on drilling and creating uh, kind of uh, tabletop exercises, how to respond to these issues. But is it safe now? Can you a know, terrorist take down the grid? I think it would be really unlikely. You can never say never. One of the interesting things when I hear people talk, you know, the talking head deal, right? Everybody's got an opinion on this one. Um, I actually have top secret clearance, and I work with folks in government across the whole spectrum, not just Homeland Security, but NSA, CIA, DOD, a variety of other areas. I would say this. We can't think about our defenses against this asynchronous threat as a fixed approach. We've got to have an options-based approach, which is adaptive and can morph and anticipate changes as they invariably will occur. I can tell you the threat environment is exceedingly complex and likewise also changes. So to say, oh, we've got it covered, no problem, nobody could ever say that, nobody telling you the truth. But are we in pretty good shape? Yeah, I think we are. The challenge is always to stay ahead of the challenge and, and keep moving and anticipating. Tom Fanning of Southern, great to talk to you again. Great to talk to you, thanks.